So now we're going to talk about uh, membranes, mainly. And so just to kind of go through this again, there's the, uh, there's the eco-roof portion, the soil and the vegetation. And then let me get the uh, pointer. It's right here. And then we, uh, uh, and then there's typically, although not necessarily required, a drainage layer of some kind. So whether it's a gravel material, which is sort of the older fashioned way of doing it in roof gardens or new materials that have been developed with the regard to this drainage layer. Or, or the existing soil can provide the Right, and we're going to talk about those <coughs> options later, but just to give you an idea, there's, there's some provision for drainage. Either way you go. And then the membrane and then the deck. Now we've been showing, one thing we noticed about our graphics is that we have been showing this in terms of some kind of joist system. Uh, just imagine, if you will, that this could as, as well be concrete or some other kind of roof. This was just for the drawing. We're not saying all roofs are like that, especially when we talked about uh, insulation being on the interior of a building and, and such. And then uh, we don't have an oh yeah we don't have an arrow for the insulation because it can go in three different places. Right. right. I'm not and then the insulation cold as Dave said cold warm and inverted, and I think there are other depending on who you talk to they have different terms for those. So then so you have those various conditions and you so what kind of membrane then is associated with those different things? So just to give you an idea, first membranes. Membrane is intended to protect the building. Obviously, two basic types. There's, uh, or at least we're referring to two basic types. A modified bitumen, which is the asphalt that's been modified with a petroleum uh, waste product that gives it more elasticity and thus uh, makes it a better project product. And then there's the thermoplastics, also referred to as single plies, and as they, as this says, thermal set is EPDM. And so regardless of the names, most of the acronyms, EPDM, TPO, PVC, those are a single, usually a single layer that goes out onto, and it's usually pre-manufactured. It's not a liquid, it's, it's in rolls. And then the modified bitumens are often in liquid and or rolls, or sometimes both. It might be a liquid that then is covered with a cap sheet, things like that. So there are these products. I wouldn't be surprised that there are some others that we don't know about. But the bottom line is, is that, for instance, within our region, I don't know, uh, you know, there are, certain, there are companies that deal with a lot of these things. And the question is, how do you know which membrane to choose for your project and which one's best? Now, they all work, and all of these companies, depending on which company you're getting the particular product from, will indicate to you whether their product is something they recommend being used on an eco-roof. So some of the modified bitumen companies will indicate that it's, uh, well, without getting into that too much right now. But anyway, so there's a lot of questions in that regard. Uh, so asphalt combined with modifiers and then reinforcement material is the, what's re is kind of the, the standard asphalt material that's used quite a bit. I just said it comes in sheets, rolls, and liquid. It can be applied hot, cold, or torched down. We, well, we have some slides of those. And then there's a, a loose laid material. And this is, there it goes. So this is uh, a material that was put on this building here uh, right above us. This uh, is a uh, modified bitumen, and it's hot applied. And so there are problems with hot applied. There are benefits with hot applied. And uh, the uh, building officials here that take care of our city buildings uh, decided on this particular product. And the company that makes this product says this is good for an eco roof. So that's what we have. And you can see it's poured on, and then they put some fabric on, and then they, uh, I think they did put two pour on layers, and then they have a cap sheet over the top of that. What's a cap sheet? A cap sheet is, I think it might be here. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get some uh, uh, some of this at our break. We'll bring, bring the them in. The physical examples of this yeah, we have material. This. So, so I think we'll show it in, this, in the next slide. But here's the fabric that goes on top of the first material that's been poured on. And then it's, of course, spread out and uh, making it waterproof. Okay, there's the cap sheet. The cap sheet is a 
roll out material about three feet wide and it's also the asphalt material and it has it's called a cap sheet because it has granular material impregnated into the top and that helps protect it from walking on it and uh, the ultraviolet rays and things like that it's a cap sheet meaning a protective cap and this is actually what was done this is the eco trust building and it had a torch down material so the modified asphalt uh, was in rolls, and then at all the seams or any any place they had a seam, they used a torch to soften it up and create that uh, that bonded seam. And one thing, just as a side note, we were um, doing some research on this, and one of the interesting things about torch down is that um, there is a flame involved, and uh, you know, being sure that. Uh, there's no combustible materials that are immediately adjacent to wherever you're putting your uh, roof membrane down on. And I, we heard through the grapevine that New York City uh, doesn't allow torch down methods within its city boundaries because of the fire hazard. And uh, so it's something to think about when you're discussing uh, your eco roof and understanding if they are using a torch down that if there's anything you might be specking that could be combustible to at least acknowledge that. And also on this, this particular product, it's not just at the seams, it's actually as it's being unrolled, it's torched down as it goes. Uh, this again is our roof up here. So we have a cap sheet on top of the material that was laid out there. And that's this part right here. <coughs> and then this blue is the root barrier. So for asphalt materials, you have to have a root barrier. We'll talk about root barriers in a minute. And then the rigid styrofoam is on top of the root barrier in this particular design. There are so many variations of this. It's pretty, uh, well, it's, it's a process that you, as you're going through the design that you'll, that is discussed. What works best on this building with regard to all these different layers and things. Is a root barrier porous or? A root barrier is not porous. It is uh, impervious. To keep that's to keep the roots from going through. Yeah, sorry. So what happens is that this material, because of its its nature, is vulnerable to root intrusion. So the root barrier, this plastic impermeable layer, which is just a thin plastic, roots can't get through that. And so that's the, the reason for it. Some of the other materials like TPO and some of the others don't require a root barrier. And so thermoplastics, TPOs, or PVCs, uh, typically referred to as a single ply. They come in rolls. The seams are welded with solvents or heat, and they're laid loosely or adhered to the deck through some, some means. Uh, sometimes they're on top of the insulation, so they're not adhered to the deck. They're adhered some way to the insulation. What does the O stand for? I don't know. Olefin? Thermo Thermoplastic uh, something like that. Okay. And this is an example of a reflective thermoplastic that's been applied to a residential project in Southeast. And this is on the tour of homes. Somebody mentioned the OSD tour of homes. This is uh, uh, Lando. the Lando uh, project. Rancho Lando. Rancho Lando. Pat Lando, he's a landscape architect in town, mm -hmm. and so this is his roof. So this is before it, what, he's in a very shady spot, he's got trees all over. And so this is before the uh, soil was applied. And uh, so this has been uh, planted uh, as of, uh, since this picture was taken. And that's a TPO, we think? It's a TPO, yeah. yeah. So it's one ply. And this is just some, these aren't very easy to see, but this is some of the, this is just a bucket of some kind of material that's used for the uh, adhesive associated with the TPO that's going in. And I need to stand over here, don't I? And uh, this is what a roll of TPO looks like from this vantage point. This isn't all that good to look at. This is TPO right here. See how it can be pretty thin. They make different thicknesses of it. And this is a re-roofing project on this building over here in Southwest near uh, uh, 12th and uh, Clay. These were all taken with Tom's uh, high-tech bow tie camera. This is, I'm on my way to the <laughs> Hamilton Eco secret. Roof. <laughs> and they were re-roofing re this. Anyway, okay, so 
And then EPM, which is referred to as thermal set, uh, com it also comes in rolls. It comes in some large sheets as well, and it is a single ply. Seams are sealed, uh, again, with liquid adhesive and or tape, and laid loosely or adhered typically does not require a root barrier, although depending on who you talk to, some people might say that it does require a root barrier. Mm -hmm. So those are important questions to ask, whatever kind of membrane you're, you're thinking of using. This is a re-roofing project on the Bank of America, or I think it's Bank of America. It's that black building right over on the kitty corner from this building. So this is when they were re-roofing this section, and uh, I don't think they took the old roof off. The, uh, mm -hmm. the new roofing yeah. is in those yellow containers, right. and that looks like the old roof there. And then you go through this sequence, and you can see that they have, and there's no eco-roof on this. They just put a new roof on. Uh, I guess they had a leak or whatever reason they were using and that's just the construction sequencing. A, yeah, it looks like there's a felt fabric with some mm -hmm. sort of protection being laid in, in, in the front edge of right. that and then the membrane being placed on top of that and it appears in the previous slide, sorry, oh, maybe it's the next one, Tom, that uh, there, yeah. it's being fully adhered where they're actually putting that um, the adhesive, adhesive mopping it onto, I think that layer that layer has been folded back that half edge then they'll mop it on and then roll it out onto there so it fully adheres down could have put an eco roof on now when we talked about using an existing membrane one thing that we didn't mention was there's the idea of using an existing membrane and putting an, a new membrane membrane over the top of it there's also the possibility of using a membrane that's there right now and putting the eco roof on that membrane so not putting a membrane over a membrane, putting an eco-roof on an existing membrane. And that has been done in a couple projects in Portland. Uh, this is what we have on City Hall right now. And what's really exciting about City Hall is that the, uh, the building has, we've had a structural analysis done, and it will hold, uh, in some places, 40 pounds per square foot of additional weight. And in some locations, it'll hold 100 pounds of additional weight just built the way it is right now. Well, and it had a major renovation uh, 12 years ago or something like that. So it's very strong in some locations. Well, most of the roof, as a matter of fact. And this is Dave's little shed with an EPDM. Same thing as what's on City Hall, just by coincidence. That's a uh, yeah, EPDM pond liner that uh, came in a 15-foot roll. Uh, right off, and you just put pretty much any length. I mean, I'm sure the roll had an end to it, but for my purposes, it was 15 by 12 is what I needed. So they were able to just pull it off the roll and cut it for me. And, and how much I, was that? Uh, it was about 100 bucks. So for you know less than a dollar a square foot, and so um, and I was able to have a seamless uh, membrane for this roof. What was the thickness of your pond liner? This it was about 40. I think it's 41 mil, something like that. 41 to 42 mil on this one and they, they they go 60 mil is very common for kind of typical roofing but this one happened to be a little thinner and lighter because I was able to get a running start and just heave it up there okay, <laughs> okay.